Today's video is not about some random project of mine, but instead it's an attempt to answer a question. A question that has plagued me, an electronics hobbyist, for a great many years. Why does the smoke from a soldering iron always go straight into your eyes when you're trying to solder a circuit together? It's driven me nuts for long enough, and today with all of this stuff, I am going to figure out why that happens. To better visualize the motion of air around a soldering iron, I've taken over most of the garage with this setup for filming fog illuminated by what I'm calling a plane laser. I don't know if there's actually a more technical term. The plane laser is actually just a regular laser pointer that is pointed into a 45 degree angle mirror that spins really, really fast. So it looks like the one dimensional beam of light <laughs> turns into a two dimensional sheet of light. We're making line. Oh God. Yep. There we go. Already. I printed these brackets out the other day, and when I got it working, it was sort of trippy. Well, this is super fun. I could just sit here and play with the, like watching this move in your periphery and watching it hit, like intersect all the walls, it feels like you're moving a plane around in CAD. Yeah, I was noticing that. Just weirdly seeing a random plane. Like it feels like there's just a glitch. <laughs> then we reach another problem. Air is transparent. I know, who'd have thunk it? The best way to make air visible to a regular camera is to add opaque stuff to it that can move with the air, but doesn't actually affect the motion of the air. If we have microscopic particles small enough to remain suspended in the air, but large enough to scatter light, that would be perfect. And it turns out you can generate such magical microscopic particles with this DIY smoke machine that you can find plans for all over the internet. The first step in making a smoke machine like this is to cook a spaghetti dinner. That is how you turn one of these into one of these. Once you've got an empty jar, you're going to want to drill some holes in the lid, epoxy in a soldering iron and a couple tubes, and fill the whole thing with wicking material and mineral oil. In my case, I burned one of the tubes shut and the cheapest 30 watt soldering iron from Amazon actually started to melt itself. So I added a ridiculous amount of silicone caulk rated for 400 Fahrenheit. When you combine both of these, you get an awesome light show. The suspended oil particles in the air scatter the green light from the plane laser and you can effectively take a cross section of the air in a room and look at how it's moving. When you use this method to look at somebody's soldering, the problem is clear. The smoke traveled straight towards my face. <laughs> and if I move to the other side, it still travels straight towards my face. And if I'm not there, the smoke goes straight up. So clearly something weird is happening. So we have now confirmed that soldering irons are sentient, fueled by dark magic, and despise their users at all moments in time. It's not just confirmation bias that the smoke is always going in your face. My initial hypothesis as to why this was happening was based on what I learned from my no moving parts fire tornado design that I published literally six years ago today as I film this. I feel really old. Fires create a draft. They draw air in from the sides, heat it, and then shoot it vertically upward with the flames. You can see the soldering iron here is doing the exact same thing. My thought was that if I sat next to a soldering iron, my body would be blocking the draft from my direction, and the imbalanced lateral motion of the air might push the rising smoke towards my head. To test this, I used a large cardboard box as a human analog. I tried it on both sides of the iron and saw very little effect. Nothing like the straight to your face smoke that I had experienced before. I did see a slight increase in the draft once when I tilted the box, but I'll get back to that in a minute. After huffing vaporized baby oil for an hour, <laughs> oh, man, I hope this stuff isn't toxic. I decided to go back and watch some videos to see what I could learn and developed three new hypotheses, body heat draft, breathing vortices, and the Kawanda effect. The idea of body heat draft is that a warm-blooded human body might produce enough heat to have its own fire-like draft and actually attract air from around it. 
To test this, I planned to sit next to the soldering iron and try not to breathe. My 98.6 degree body didn't seem to be generating a massive updraft before I ran out of air, so I changed methodology, leaning backwards so my breath wouldn't interfere. Still, there wasn't really any significant updraft that could alone explain what I had seen with the solder smoke in my face earlier. The breathing vortices came from a bit that I saw on camera, where I inhaled and then exhaled and made a tiny little vortex. To test this, I needed to recreate that moment with the laser repositioned, such that I could see what was going on. I moved the plane laser source to in front of me rather than above me, which meant that it was actually a lot fainter by the time it got close enough to illuminate the air below my face, but you can still see some vorticity in these images. Simply breathing in and out did, of course, affect the airflow and could cause many vortices to form between me and the iron, but none actually produced the constant angled draft from the iron like I was looking for. The final hypothesis came from the tilted box experiment, where it looked like I had almost grabbed the stream of hot air, leaving the iron and taken it back with the box. Oh, that's cool. Wow. This would be some variant of the Kwanda effect, and to test it, I got a barrel of cheese balls. In an ideal world, I was hoping that I would be able to sort of capture the hot air stream with a round, smooth surface. For example, if you leaned over the hot iron and then leaned back before starting to solder, maybe during that process you had basically attached an air current to your face. But trying to recreate this with a large plastic cylinder unfortunately did not work. At this point, I was extremely frustrated for basically striking out on four of four hypotheses. I still wanted the asymmetric draft answer to explain everything, but with a variety of box designs, moving the iron up and down a little bit farther from the table, and even using a more humanoid shape, I couldn't get it to work. The draft just wouldn't get in the face of the cutout, but every time that I myself sat down and actually burned some solder, it went right towards my face. Clearly, there was at least one variable that I was completely missing. What if it was the hands? I don't know about you, but when I'm soldering, I'm normally using my hands. Turns out the secret was the arms. If you notice, from every clip where the smoke goes directly into my own face, I have both arms out on the table in front of me, holding the iron in my right hand and either a wire or solder in the left. Inadvertently, I was sealing off a region of space that was bounded by my torso, my arms, and the iron itself. In two dimensions, that meant no air could move in or out of this spot, and then the draft, fueling the soldering iron's updraft, had to come from across the table, towards me, deflecting the smoke directly into my face. Another thing I noticed was how amazingly fragile this situation was. Every time I tried to pump in extra mineral oil smoke from the jar, I completely destroyed the draft and needed to wait 10 seconds or so for it to reform. The most reliable way to observe this draft was literally to just feed the iron some solder and let it smoke for real. As a sanity check, I was actually able to reverse the draft with a similar setup in the other direction and then flip it back again. It was stronger to the right, but my like human analog model on the left didn't do a very good job of enclosing the air. Instead of being the hunched over cutout, it was basically just a cardboard box. And neither of the models was actually wearing a shirt that would, you know, be a, a much larger block for movement of air. So the asymmetric draft answer was actually correct. It just needed a lot more than a torso a foot and a half away from the soldering iron. You actually need to create a region where no air can come in or out. And that region needs to extend all the way up to the soldering iron as the source of heat that is causing the draft. There's no way that it can sort of hook around and come in from your side because your arms are there blocking that air. So all of the air has to come towards you and the draft goes straight towards your face. So there you have it. If you want solder smoke to not blow directly into your face, all you've got to do is not use your hands or I guess turn on a small fan. Considering telekinetic hands-free soldering is probably a little bit difficult, I would opt for the fan. It seems to take an extremely small disturbance to completely destroy this draft, 
but the draft does reform within a few seconds once you stop perturbing the air, as if, you know, you tried to be still for a minute to focus on a solder joint. That's just enough time for the draft to start up and blow smoke into your face. Soldering stations with fans or fume hoods or anything fancy like that probably don't have this problem, but I have never used something quite so nice. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been something that I've been thinking about for a very long time and finally got all of the pieces together to actually run the experiment and do the visualization. Uh, so I'm very happy that this project is done and that I actually found an answer. I thought this was really interesting. If you do disagree with my analysis, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I am sure that there are a bunch of variables that I'm probably missing. If I get something really significantly wrong, I might do something like a revisit. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe for more projects and time lapses and simulations and apparently the occasional sanity reaffirming physics experiment. It's not just confirmation bias that the smoke goes in your face.